crying for no reason, 8 possible causes and how to cope. Download article. Understanding your uncontrollable crying. Co-authored by Alison Broneman, PhD and Jennifer Mueller, JD. Last updated, the 28th of July, 2024 fact checked. Causes of crying for no reason. Ways to cope with uncontrollable crying. When to seek medical help. Is crying good for you? Expert interview. Have you suddenly found yourself crying, seemingly for no reason? Or felt like you couldn't stop? Crying once you started. If so, then you're not alone, this happens to a lot of people. The truth is, tears are a form of healing and release for your mind and body and there's usually a reason for them, even if it's one you're not aware of. We talked to developmental psychologist Leslie Bosch to find out some causes for uncontrollable crying, what you can do in the moment, and when you should talk to a doctor. Causes of uncontrollable crying while it might seem as though you started crying for no reason, these tears typically have some underlying cause. You might be crying because of stress, anxiety, burnout, hormones, repressed emotions, or even a neurological condition. Causes of crying for no reason. Download article. 1. Stress or anxiety stress can pile up without you realizing it until you become completely overwhelmed. You might start crying to release some of that stress and tension that you've built up, even though you feel as though the crying spell came from out of nowhere. 1. What you can do, get to a safe place where you can collect yourself. Try a Breathing exercise to calm yourself down or do a body scan meditation to release tension in your body. Bosch notes that for crying from stress or anxiety, a lot of times, if we can come back to the present moment and remind ourselves that we're safe right now, this can help us to settle down. 2. Loneliness It's totally possible that you're lonely but don't even realize it. This is especially likely. If you live alone and tend to keep really busy, you might find that you're really just trying to keep yourself from thinking about your loneliness. 2. What you can do, join a local club or group related to something that interests you. Go out of your house and spend time out in public on a regular basis. Reach out to old friends you've fallen out of touch with. 3. Burn out if you've ever found yourself crying uncontrollably at work or school, burn out might be. To blame. When your responsibilities and workload gradually increase, you might not even. Realize how much you're taking on until it becomes too much and overwhelms you. When you don't take enough time for yourself, you're likely to end up burnt out. 3. What you can do, take time off as soon as you can. Until you have a chance for a full break, carve out time each day to engage in self-care and recharge your mental batteries. 4. Hormones People with higher levels of the hormone prolactin, common in those assigned female at birth, tend to cry more often. In contrast, the hormone testosterone seems to inhibit crying, which could explain why people with higher testosterone levels tend to cry less often than people with little to no testosterone. 4. People who menstruate might also experience uncontrollable crying as part of the menstrual cycle or when hormone levels change during menopause. 5. What you can do, if you think your crying jags are caused by hormonal fluctuations, talk to your doctor about medications and other treatment options. 5. 
Grief the grieving process isn't linear. If you've lost someone close to you, it's possible you'll find. You suddenly burst into tears seemingly for no reason, weeks or even months after you thought. You'd already processed the loss. This is just a normal part of grieving and isn't anything to worry. About. 6. What you can do, take a moment to think about the person you've lost or what. Might have triggered your grief to bubble to the surface. Sit with your feelings and. Allow them to come out. Bosch agrees that if you have gone through a difficult time, you need to allow. Yourself to feel the emotions that made you cry. 6. Repressed emotions If you don't feel comfortable expressing your emotions you might try to push them down. But often you can only push your feelings down for so long before they force their way out. If you've been repressing your emotions for so long that you don't even realize you're doing it, you could easily feel as though you had just suddenly started crying for no reason. 7. Repressed emotions might also be related to the norms of your culture. 8. 4. Example, men might have more repressed emotions in a culture that values stoicism in men. What you can do, talk to a therapist if possible. They can help you unpack and process emotions that you've repressed as well as work through complex Emotions that might be overwhelming you. Bryn Brown, author and professor of social work. Process your emotions. Without understanding how our feelings, thoughts, and behaviors work together, it's almost impossible to find our way back to ourselves. When we don't understand how our emotions shape our thoughts and decisions, we become disembodied from our own experiences and disconnected from each other. 7. Mental condition Uncontrollable crying spells are most associated with depression, but other mental health conditions can cause you to cry for seemingly no reason as well. 9. What you can do, talk to a doctor or therapist if you suspect you have a mental health condition but you're undiagnosed. If you already have a diagnosis, tell your doctor about your crying spells, they might be able to recommend an effective treatment. 8. Neurological conditions Some nervous system conditions, including stroke, multiple sclerosis, MS, traumatic brain injury, Alzheimer's disease, and Parkinson's disease, can cause bouts of uncontrollable crying, or laughter. This condition is known as the pseudobulbar effect and can be managed with medication. 10. What you can do, tell the doctors who are treating your neurological condition about this symptom. They'll determine the best way to address it. Ways to cope with uncontrollable crying. Download article. 1. Tell others what's going on. People are less likely to be taken off guard, and perhaps say something insensitive as a result, if they know that you're prone to uncontrollable crying. It's up to you who you talk to, just let them know that you've had sudden crying jags lately and you would appreciate their support as you cope with this issue. 11. Bosch agrees that fears are easier to fight when you have support from people who love you so try not to be embarrassed and allow others to help. Talking to others is especially helpful if there's a neurological cause for your crying, which can cause you to cry at completely inappropriate times. If people close to you know about your condition they won't be surprised or weirded out and will understand how to support you. 2. Let yourself cry. If you're in a situation with some privacy where you can take a moment to yourself, let those tears flow. 
even if you feel as though you're crying for no reason, your body had a reason that it chose that particular release. Honor your body's choice and let it out. 12. For example, if you've been repressing a lot of difficult emotions or holding back a lot of tension, a good cry can help you feel a lot better and more relaxed about your situation. Remember that crying is a natural stress response. Even though it might seem embarrassing to cry in some situations, there's nothing wrong with it. 3. Use a deep breathing exercise to stop the tears. If you slow down your breathing and heart rate, sometimes you can interrupt the nervous response that started the tears. Try inhaling to the count of four and then exhaling to the count of five. Pause, then inhale to the count of four again. Repeat a half a dozen times or until you start to feel more at peace. 13. You can also use breathing exercises to help you release your emotions in a healthy way. This is valuable if your crying jags seem to be caused by something emotional. 4. Distract yourself with something mentally absorbing. If you don't necessarily feel upset, you might be able to turn off the waterworks by finding something else to occupy your mind. Even. Reading a random Wikipedia article can be sufficiently distracting that your body forgets all about that crying it was going to do. 14. The point here is to intentionally ignore the proverbial elephant in the room, the fact that you feel teary. If you can get your mind onto something else, the episode might pass. 5. Try stop crying strategies to dry your eyes. These strategies are typically aimed at decreasing anxiety and tension to interrupt your body's stress response that triggers crying. If you feel anxious or panicky, try a grounding exercise to settle your nervous system. 15. Bosch recommends that you bring yourself back into the present moment by attending to your senses. Basically, you look around you and name five things that you can see, four things you can hear, three things you can touch, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. This exercise will help ground you in the present. 6. See a doctor for medical treatment. There are some prescription medications that target Uncontrollable crying spells, usually as a symptom of a psychological or neurological condition. Therapy and other treatments can also be beneficial, depending on the root cause of your crying. Jags. 16. Even if your uncontrollable crying doesn't seem to be associated with any particular condition, a therapist can help you figure out possible triggers as well as coping strategies. When to seek medical help. Download article. 1. You can't control when you start crying. As an adult, you typically have pretty good control over crying, unless you're in serious physical pain. This is the reason uncontrollable crying can be so scary, you've lost control that you normally have. If you find that you can't hold back the tears, especially when they seem to come for no reason, there might be something else going on. 17. This also relates to times when your crying has nothing to do with what's going on around you. For example, you might be walking across a parking lot and suddenly burst into tears, completely unprovoked. If this only happens to you once it might not be that big of a deal, but if it happens frequently and there's no emotional connection to the crying, there might be a neurological reason. 2. You have a hard time stopping crying. It would be one thing if you just teared up for a second. 
and then were able to quickly recover. But with your crying jags, once you get started, it might be an hour or longer before you're able to get yourself together. Even if you stop briefly, you might find that you almost immediately start up again. 18. Pay particular attention if methods that used to help you stop crying in the past don't work anymore. That's a sign that this crying has a different cause. 3. Your crying jags interfere with your daily life. Generally speaking, crying does good things for your physical and mental health. Even if you don't understand the reason you're doing it, if you're crying, it's safe to assume it's something your body needs. At the same time, if you're crying so frequently that you find it hard to go through your regular routine, you might benefit from medical help. 19. This also applies if you avoid doing things or going out with friends because you're afraid you'll suddenly start crying for no reason. 4. Your crying jags have become relatively frequent. Crying jags typically have to be pretty frequent to interfere with your normal life, but here you're looking for a trend. If your crying jags are increasing in frequency regardless of what you do, that's likely cause for concern. 20. Try to document how frequent your crying spells were at first and the period over which that frequency has been increasing. That could give doctors information about the progression of any potential neurological condition. 5. Your crying jags are accompanied by other symptoms. This is especially important if you have never been diagnosed with a neurological or psychological condition. Other symptoms could indicate that one of those conditions is causing your crying jags and your crying jags likely won't get better until the underlying condition is treated. 21. It can help to log your symptoms over the course of a few days or weeks. That will make it easier for your doctor to assess your condition and narrow down appropriate diagnoses. If you're concerned about a possible psychological condition, keep a mental health journal to make it easier to describe your concerns. Is crying good for you? Download article. 1. Yes, crying can help ease physical and emotional pain. There are different types of tears, but the kind that are triggered by your emotions can actually be very healing. That's because crying triggers the release of endorphins in your brain, leading to a sense of relief. You might even experience physically pleasurable sensations. 22. Figuring out what's causing you to cry uncontrollably can help you actually realize these benefits. While crying can serve as a release, it doesn't accomplish much if you don't know what you're releasing. It's important to remember that even though you might think you're crying for no reason, your body always has a reason. Crying is a natural reaction and not Something to be embarrassed or ashamed about. 23. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Health for teens and kids. Emotional health and well-being. How to have a good summer if you have no friends, for teens. Download article. Methods. 1. Planning fun activities. 2. Using your time for self-development. 3. Working on your relationships. Other sections. Questions and answers. Video. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Desiree Panlilio. Last updated, 
the 17th of August 2022 references. Spending a summer without friends can seem like a boring prospect, but there are lots of fun and interesting ways to spend your time. Start by making a list and a schedule of activities to fill your summer days. Then, look into ways to find a purpose, such as by working towards a goal. You can also use some of your extra time over the summer to work on your relationships. Method 1. Planning fun activities. Download article. 1. 1. Visit the library if you love to read. Reading for pleasure can help to alleviate symptoms of depression and promote a sense of well-being. Summer is a great time to read for pleasure, so pick up a book from your local library for a free activity. Then, spend some time reading in your bedroom, at a coffee shop, or under a shady tree on a nice day. You can check out a fiction novel for a fun escape, read a biography to learn about a person you admire, or check out a book on a subject that interests you. If you prefer ebooks, see if your library has an app for checking out digital copies. 2. 2. Beat a video game if you are into gaming. If you have a video game that you have never had, Time to finish or if there's a new game you're dying to try, now is your chance. Set yourself up with something to drink and an easy to grab snack so that you can play for a few hours without interruptions. Then, pop in the game and get started. If you start to lose focus, take a quick break. This may help you to get past a challenging part of the game. You may also want to try turning off the music and turning down the volume to help you stay focused. Watching someone else beat a boss, such as on YouTube or Twitch, may also help you to overcome a challenging point in the game. 1. 3. 3. Make a scrapbook if you're crafty. Scrapbooking is a fun way to get creative with printed photos, and it can also help you to feel happy and relaxed. Get a blank scrapbook and fill it with pictures of your school year. Add colorful background paper and stickers to accent the pictures. Then, write on the pages to indicate what is going on in the photos. Another option is to make a collage using a big piece of poster board or cardboard. Glue pictures directly onto the board and add stickers for accents throughout. 4. 4. Go to the beach to relax. Spending a day at the beach is a relaxing way to spend a summer day. And it is a great solo activity. Put on your swimsuit and a cover-up. Then, pack some sunscreen, a towel, water, and snacks. You might also want to load your phone with music, a podcast, or an audiobook before you head out. Find a comfortable spot on the beach, and relax. Make sure that you put on an SPF 30 or higher sunscreen at least 15 minutes before you head out in the sun. Reapply it every two hours to protect your skin. 2. 5. 5. See a movie on a hot or rainy day. Summer is known for blockbuster hits at the movies, and heading to the movies is a great way to spend a day when the weather is rainy or hot. Check out the latest action-adventure flick, horror movie, or romantic drama. Choose something that appeals to you. You might even want to treat yourself to some popcorn and a drink. Check to see if there is a bargain day at your local movie theater for a low cost. Option. Many movie theaters feature matinee prices and half price popcorn and drinks on a certain day of the week, such as a Tuesday or Wednesday. Some cities also have free outdoor movies in the summer, so check your local 
Community Events Guide to find out about these events. 3. If you don't want to spend money on a trip to the movies, choose a new movie to watch on a streaming service. Make a bag of microwave popcorn for a movie. Theater-style snack. Method 2. Using your time for self-development. Download article. 1. 1. Set a goal to accomplish over the summer. Setting goals is a great way to keep yourself focused. Working towards the goal and eventually accomplishing the goal will also give you a sense of satisfaction and pride. 4. Think about what you would like to accomplish with a portion of your time over the summer, and then turn this into a SMART goal, which means that it is specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and time-based. For example, if you would like to learn how to skateboard over the summer, then you might write a SMART goal that reads, I will practice skateboarding for 20 minutes on at least 3 days per week for the next 6 weeks. To lose weight, you might write a SMART goal that reads, I will lose 5 pounds over the next 30 days by taking daily 30-minute walks and keeping my calories under 1,800 per day. 2. 2. Get 30 minutes of physical activity 5 days per week. Getting regular physical activity is one of the best things you can do for your overall health. It can help you to control your weight, sleep better, improve your mood, reduce your risk of a variety of diseases, and improve your thinking skills. 5. Aim for 30 minutes of cardiovascular activity on 5 or more days per week, or a total of 150 minutes of cardiovascular activity per week. 6. Some examples of cardiovascular exercise include running, swimming, walking, hiking, biking, dancing, climbing stairs. 3. 3. Experiment with a new style if you want to change your look. Summer is the perfect time to experiment with your style. Try out new clothes, hair, makeup, and forward slash or accessories to find what makes you feel confident and comfortable. For example, you could try getting a new haircut and color. Try out bangs if you've never had them before, or dye your hair a shade darker than your natural color, or try something even more daring. Be sure to check with your parents before cutting or dyeing your hair. Opt for a new style of clothing. If your usual style is preppy, such as khakis and polo shirts, then you might opt for a rocker look by sporting a pair of ripped jeans and a band t-shirt. Look into makeup that will work well with your features. For example, if you are fair-skinned with blue eyes, then you might try a copper eyeshadow to make your eye color pop. 4. 4. Teach yourself a new skill if you want to learn something. Summer is a great time to learn something new. Think about what you would like to learn and find a way to teach yourself. Even if you only spend a small part of each day on learning this new skill, you will have another fun way to spend your time. For example, maybe you want to learn how to speak French. Download an app, such as Duolingo, and commit to practicing for 10 minutes every day during the summer. If you want to learn how to cook, try asking a family member if they would help. You learn, or get a beginner's cookbook and use it to help you learn. Look at your interests. If you like music, you could learn to play a musical instrument like a guitar. Method 3. Working on your relationships. Download article. 1. 
1. Ask an acquaintance to join you on an outing or activity. If you don't want to do an activity alone, then think about who you could ask to join you. You can ask someone you met at the gym, someone from school who you would like to get to know better, or another acquaintance. Whoever you ask, they will likely appreciate the invitation and you might even make a new friend. In the process, since making friends is often a matter of putting in the time and effort to get to know someone better. Try saying something like, Hi Gina. I am planning to go to the movies at 2 on Saturday. Would you like to join me? Another option is, I want to try to beat Dark Souls this summer and I know you. Play too, so maybe we should team up. 2. 2. Spend quality time with your family. Summer is a great time to bond with your parents, siblings, cousins, grandparents, and other relatives who you don't get to see very often during the school year. Plan some outings with individual family members or make plans with your family as a group. For example, you could arrange to have a beach day with one of your cousins, find an age-appropriate concert to attend with a sibling, or plan a family game night with your parents and forward slash or grandparents. 3. 3. Join a club or special interest group. Look into local special interest groups you could join, such as a soccer club, a knitting circle, or a live-action role-playing group. You may be able to find a club by checking on Facebook or on a site like Meetup. Be safe when planning to meet with people online. Make sure to talk to your parents about it first and only meet with people in a public place until you know them better. 4. 4. Look into a summer camp. Attending a summer camp is a great way to meet new people, learn new skills, and have fun. Look into a camp that interests you and talk to your parents about the possibility of attending. For example, you could try a science camp if you are interested in science, an art camp if you like to do art, or a religious camp if you want to deepen your spiritual life. You may also be able to find a day camp if attending a camp out of town is not something you want or are able to do. Community Q&A Question Can I go to summer camp if I didn't sign up for it? Community answer Probably not. You can look into summer camps and ask about late registration. If they still have space, you might be able to go on short notice. Not helpful 11 helpful 13 Question my friends often exclude me from their conversations when we hang out together. What do I do? Community answer. Listen to the conversation and look for opportunities to ask questions. People love to talk about themselves, so if you ask questions to keep them talking, they might be more likely to include you and ask you some questions as well. If your friends continue to leave you out, then you might want to look for different people to hang out with. Not helpful 21 helpful 31. Question. How can I avoid spending time with someone who I don't like to be around? Community answer. Be direct with the person, but also be kind when they invite you to do something. Try saying. Something like, you are a very nice person, but I don't think we have much in common. Not helpful 8 helpful 16. Ask a question. Submit. Video. Tips. If you feel uncomfortable when you are doing something on your own, try to accept the feelings and then change your focus to whatever you are doing. 7. 
health for teens and kids. Emotional health and well-being. How to cope with a controlling parent. Download article. Methods. 1. Empowering yourself. 2. Improving your situation. 3. Repairing the relationship. Plus show one more. Other sections. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Article summary. Co-authored by Trudy Griffin, LPC, MS. Last updated, the 23rd of January 2024 approved. It is common for children to feel like their parents are too reserved in letting them live their own lives. Sometimes this is because the child is just pushing boundaries and maturing a little faster than the parent realizes, and other times it is because the parent is attempting to control the child's life. There are many reasons for the need to control your child, from being a perfectionist to being afraid that they will repeat your mistakes, and parents often do not even realize that they are harming their child instead of protecting them. Method 1. Empowering Yourself Download Article 1. 1. Identify Controlling Behaviors Some parents are demanding of their children, but this does not always mean that they are controlling. People who are controlling use certain tactics to control others. The tactics can be obvious or subtle. The behaviors can vary from outright criticisms to making veiled threats. Some signs your parent may be controlling include, 1. Isolating you from other family members and forward slash or friends, such as by never. Allowing you to spend time with friends or other family members. Criticizing you constantly about trivial things such as your appearance, your manners, or your choices. Threatening to hurt you or threatening to hurt him or herself, such as by saying, I will kill myself if you don't come home right now. Giving conditional love and acceptance, such as saying, I only love you when you keep your room clean. Keeping score of your past mistakes, such as by listing off mistakes you made in the past as a way to make you feel bad or to get you to do something. Using guilt to get you to do things, such as by saying, I spent 18 hours in labor to bring you into this world and you can't even spend a few hours with me. Spying on you or otherwise not respecting your privacy, such as by searching your room or reading the text messages on your phone when you leave the room. 2. 2. Accept responsibility for your actions. Though your parent, S, may be controlling, you are responsible for how you respond to them. You decide whether to let them dictate your decisions, or stand up to them. You are also in control of whether you react respectfully or allow yourself to get overly angry and escalate the situation. 2. Some ways that you can begin to think about your actions are to look in the mirror and talk to yourself. Play out different scenarios that are likely to happen with your parents and practice responding the way you have decided that you will respond. This makes it easier to be in control when the time comes. 3. 3. Do not obsess about pleasing your parent, S. It is a parent's job to make sure that you grow up into a happy, healthy, decent human being. It is your job to be a happy, healthy, and decent human being. If what makes you happy isn't what your parent, S, envision for you, you have to please yourself, not them. It is your life to live. 3. 4. 4. Make an objective action plan. It isn't likely that you'll be able to totally break away from a 
controlling situation in one swift move. You will need an action plan that is subtle and realistic to start making your own decisions. The plan could start with something as simple as telling yourself every day that you are in control to start building your confidence. Ideally, it will move you slowly forward into making more and more decisions for yourself. 4. 5. 5. Accept that you cannot change your parent, s. Just as your parent, s, are not able to control how you think or feel, you cannot change the way that they think or feel. You can change how you respond to them, and sometimes this will change how they treat you. It is up to your parent, s, when and if they will change their personality. 5. To force your parents to change would be similar to the control that they are trying to assert over you. If you remind yourself of this, you will be forced to accept that they can make their own decisions about changing. Tell you s what you think. Which way of coping with controlling parents would you find most helpful? Accepting responsibility for my actions. Not obsessing about pleasing my parents. Making an objective action plan. Accepting that I cannot change my parents. 155 total votes. Method 2. Improving your situation. Download article. 1. 1. Distance yourself physically from your parent, s. Most of the time, people use emotions to assert control over each other. This can take place in the form of anger, guilt, or withholding approval. If you want to break the grip of a controlling person, parent or otherwise, you may have to distance yourself from him or her such as by spending less time together and calling less often. If you still live at home, especially if you are a minor, then building distance might be hard. However, you can set boundaries between you and your parent. Seek help from a school counselor or teacher. 2. 2. Try not to get defensive. Cutting down on the time you spend with your parent may cause him or her to get upset and lash out at you. If your parent complains that you are not spending enough time with him or her or accuses you of not loving him or her, then try not to get defensive. 6. Try saying something like, I am sorry that you are upset. I understand how that might be upsetting. Keep in mind that things may get worse with your parents before you start to see any improvement. However, it is important to maintain your distance and avoid being drawn in by threats. For example, if your mother threatens to kill herself if you do not come over, then tell her you are calling 911, hang up the phone, and Follow through. Do not rush over to her house or give in to her demands. 3. 3. Cut financial ties with your parent, s. Another form leverage often used to control a child is money. If you have the ability to make your own money, separate your finances from your parents. It might be difficult, but you need to pay your own bills buy your own things, and budget for yourself. Not only will this make you more responsible, it will also lessen the grip of a controlling parent. 7. This can be hard for minors also, but not impossible to do in small steps. Even if you don't pay your own rent and utilities, try to earn your own money for extra outings that you would like to do. This doesn't mean your parents have to say yes, but having earned the money to go to the movies eliminates one more barrier that a controlling parent can use. 4. 4. 
refrain from asking for favors from your parents. Asking a favor of your parent puts them in the position to bargain. If you want them to fulfill your need, you will have to do something in return. While this isn't inherently bad, it can quickly lead to you giving up your decision-making power to them. Ask friends or other family members if you need help. 8. 5. 5. Identify abuse. If you are a child who is being subjected to abuse, call your local child. Protective services or talk to someone at your school, like a teacher or counselor. Abuse may take many forms, so if you are unsure about whether or not you are being abused, then try talking to a school counselor. Some of the different types of abuse include physical abuse, which includes slapping, punching, restraining, burning, or injuring you in other ways. Emotional abuse, which includes name-calling, humiliation, blaming, and making unreasonable demands. Sexual abuse, which includes fondling or touching in inappropriate ways, sexual intercourse, and other sexual acts. Method 3. Repairing the Relationship Download Article 1. 1. Resolve the Past Holding grudges against your parent, s, or yourself is not a healthy way to repair a relationship. Therefore, it is helpful to forgive your parent, s, for any mistakes they made. You may also want to forgive yourself for how you reacted to those mistakes. Keep in mind that forgiveness is not about the other person. It is important for your own emotional well-being. By forgiving your parent, you are choosing to let go of the anger you feel towards him or her, but you are not saying that what your parent has said or done to you is okay. 9. To forgive someone, you will need to make a conscious choice to let go of the anger that you feel. One way to do this is by writing a letter to your parent that you do not send. In the letter, express your feelings honestly about what happened, why it angered you, and why you think that your parent did these things. 10. Then, close your letter by writing something to the effect of, I am not okay with what happened but I am choosing to release my anger about it. I forgive you. You can also say this out loud to yourself. Tell us what you think. When repairing a relationship with a controlling parent, what helps you forgive past mistakes and move forward? Writing a letter expressing my feelings and choosing to forgive. Seeking closure through therapy or support groups. Engaging in activities or hobbies that bring me joy and fulfillment. Focusing on personal growth and self-improvement. Finding common ground and shared activities to bond over. 68 total votes. 2. 2. Confront your parent, s, respectfully. You need to tell your parent, s, how you feel and why you became distant in the first place. There is no way for them to work on a problem that they are unaware exists. Do not be accusatory or disrespectful. Tell them how you feel, not what they've done. Rather than saying you took away my rights as a person a more constructive thing to say might be I felt as though I had no right to be my own person. 3. 3. Set firm boundaries for both you and your parent, s. Once you begin to repair the relationship, you want to avoid backsliding into old habits. Decide ahead of time which decisions your parent, s, can weigh in on, and which ones they cannot. Also, boundaries should be set for which decisions you can weigh in on for your parent, s 
or what things you can ask of them. 11. For example, you might decide that you might consult your parents about major career decisions, such as what college to attend or whether or not to take a job offer. However, you might leave them out of more personal decisions, such as who to date and whether or not to marry someone. You could also refuse to weigh in on certain issues that your parents bring up to you, such as love life issues. However, you might decide to offer your support if a parent is dealing with a major medical issue, such as cancer or heart problems. Method 4. Maintaining Boundaries Download Article 1. 1. Respect your boundaries in the relationship. Once boundaries have been set, you have to respect them. You cannot expect your parent, s, to respect your space and boundaries if you cannot do the same for them. If you are having trouble with the boundaries set, discuss it openly with your parents and seek a resolution. 12. When a problem arises in your relationship with your parents, using team building speech may be helpful. 13. Try saying something like, I respect your boundaries, but I feel like you might not always respect mine. What can we do to ensure that both of our needs are being met? 2. 2. Address any infringements on your personal choices. If your parent, s, are violating your boundaries, you have to let them know. This does not mean you need to be angry or upset. Calmly and respectfully inform your parent, s, that they are crossing the line and ask that it stop. If they are serious about respecting you, they will give you your space. Using humorous language can also be an effective way to deal with controlling people. 14. For example, if your parent is constantly criticizing your career choice, then try making a joke about it by saying something like, note to self. Career does not please mother. Got it. Anything else? 3. 3. Take a break if problems continue. If things begin to go right back to normal you may need to cut down on your time with your parents again. This does not have to mean cutting off all ties to your parent, s. It often just means that things have gotten too close for them, or you, to follow through with the boundaries that both sides agreed to. Spend a little more time apart and try again later. 15. 4. 4. Consider seeing a therapist if things do not improve. In some situations, the problems might be so severe that you will need to see a counselor with your parents to see any improvement. If you have tried to maintain boundaries and it is just not working, then talk to your parents about the possibility of seeing a therapist together. Try saying something like, our relationship is important to me, but I think we might need some help to have the best relationship possible. Would you be willing to see a therapist with me? Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Talk to a friend or family member about your problems. They may be able to help. Try talking to your parent, s, thoroughly before distancing yourself. The matter may be something that can be resolved in a more pleasant way. Try getting a time when your parents are more calm. Try not to approach them right after work. Try saying mom, dad, you guys work very hard for me and I appreciate it, but I Want you guys to let me kind of decide things for myself now and I feel like a baby when I have to let you guys decide.
so can I make my own decisions now? Also prepare for one of your parents to reject. Show more tips. Tips from our readers. When interacting with your controlling parent, use very simple communication and keep conversation to the bare minimum. Don't be rude and try to keep emotions out of it. It reduces provocation and starts creating some distance. Distance yourself and set boundaries when you can. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. Submit. Warnings. If you are being abused and feel that you need immediate help, contact your local child. Protective services. Do not assume that any advice given is controlling. Your parent, s, usually will have your best interest in mind and they do have more experience in life than you. How to help an emotionally unstable person and what to say when someone is struggling. Download article. Co-authored by Tracy Carver, PhD and Kira Jan. Last updated, the 5th of April, 2024 References When someone seems emotionally unstable, it can be hard to know exactly what to do or say to help them. While you can't force anyone to seek out professional help, you can support an emotionally unstable person by validating their experiences, explaining the benefits of treatment, and offering caring support. 1. We've compiled ways for you to guide the person towards the professional services they need while offering the best support you can provide them. 1. Express your concerns to the person. Download article. 1. Open up a conversation by describing the behavior you've observed. It can feel hard to start. A conversation about mental health with someone, but when you use I statements, you can talk about your concerns without making the person feel blamed or judged. 2. I've been worried about you lately. I've noticed some changes in your behavior lately, so I wanted to check in with you. I wanted to see how you're doing, since you've seemed down forward slash stressed forward slash upset, dot. 2. Ask open-ended questions. Download article. 1. Start your questions with a word like how, what or why. By asking questions that allow the person to respond with more than a yes or no you gain a better understanding of that person's situation and show them you care about their thoughts feelings, and ideas. 3. How are you feeling about that? What's troubling you? Would you tell me more about the situation forward slash your feelings forward slash that experience? 3. Listen more often than you speak. Download article. 1. Practice active listening to make the person feel heard. 4. When you actively listen, you give your full attention to the speaker and engage with what they say. From time to time, you can summarize what the person is saying and encourage them to go on. 5. Make eye contact and stay relaxed in your posture. Check your understanding by asking so it seems like you're saying. Is that right? Show them you're listening by occasionally nodding, saying oh or um. Home. Prompt them to go on by asking and, or could you tell me more about that? 4. Acknowledge the other person's emotions. Download article. 1. By telling someone their feelings are valid, you'll create connection. Oftentimes, people think that supporting someone's feelings will reinforce negative emotions or make the situation worse. In fact, by affirming someone's feelings, you can encourage communication and make them feel understood. 
that type of connection can go a long way in improving the situation. I hear how upset forward slash sad forward slash angry you are. 6. That sounds really difficult. You seem sad. 7. 5. Tell them you are there to support them. Download article. 1. Remind the person they are not alone to help them feel more comfortable. Struggling with. Mental health can feel scary and isolating, and the person might even feel like they are burdening others by sharing their difficulties. 8. By explicitly stating that you're there to help and are on their side, you can de-escalate anger or suspicion while reinforcing that the person matters and has value. 9. I'm here for you. Please let me know how I can help. I may not be able to know exactly what you're feeling, but I care about you and want to support you. 10. You matter to me. Read a poll, we asked 805 Wikiha readers, and 60% of them agreed that the best way to respond when someone confides in you about personal issues is to show empathy and offer support. Take poll. 6. Guide the person to a mental health professional. Download article. 1. Explain how professional treatment can help. Even though you're doing your best to support and care for this person, only a mental health professional can truly help resolve any underlying issues. Let the person know that psychologists are trained and use scientifically proven methods that can help them feel better. 11. When I hear you talk about how upset forward slash sad forward slash angry forward slash stressed you are, I feel worried. I think it would be really helpful for you to talk to someone about how you're feeling. 12. Could I help you find a therapist forward slash doctor to talk to? If you have experience seeing a therapist, try talking about how much it helped. You. That might help the other person feel more at ease with the idea. 13. If the person can't afford treatment, encourage them to go to a governmentally funded free clinical, called federally qualified health centers in the U.S., or reach out to the National Alliance on Mental Health 24-7 hotline by texting NAMI to 741741 14 7 in any way you can help them go to treatment download article 1 offer to drive or go along to appointments or help pay the copay 15 you can also offer to call their primary care physician for a referral to a psychologist even just sitting next to them to look up a psychologist through a workplace referral program or the internet might be helpful. However, since everyone likes to get support in different ways, you can always just ask what they'd like for help and be sure to respect their boundaries. 16. How do you feel about me driving you to the appointment? How can I best support you? What can I do to help you? 8. If possible, offer to help with daily tasks. Download article. 1. Assist with everyday tasks to help reduce this person's stress. If you can do the tasks together, you might also help that person feel less lonely, which is especially important since... Chronic stress and loneliness can worsen underlying mental health issues. 17. Just make sure to look out for your own time and energy by picking tasks that feel reasonable to you and that you can commit to doing. 18. Is there something I can take on to help make your life easier? Offer to help with grocery shopping, cooking, childcare, or household chores. 
9. Watch out for suicide warning signs. Download article. 1. If you think the person might hurt themselves, get help immediately. Call your national emergency number or the suicide prevention hotline phone number for your country, such as 988 if you're in the United States or Canada, you can also text this number. 19. Let the person know your concerns and explicitly ask are you thinking about suicide. 20. Take the person to a safe place and remove objects the person could use to hurt themselves while you wait for help. Check in with them after the crisis is over. 10. Take care of yourself. Download article. 1. If you feel really overwhelmed, set boundaries. Caring for someone dealing with mental health difficulties can be really tough. It's okay to set limits on when you can talk, what you can talk about, and how you'd like the person to speak to you if they're being disrespectful or abusive. Looking out for yourself will ultimately help you take better care of the other person. I'm here for you, but a mental health professional might be able to give you even better support. 21. If the person is being abusive or disrespectful, say, when you talk to me that way, I find it really hard to listen. Take time for yourself to spend time with others and do activities you enjoy to do. Stress. Expert Q&A. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to survive when you run away. Download article. Steps. Steps. Other sections. Questions and answers. Tips and warnings. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Leslie Bosch, Ph.D. Last updated. The 11th of July, 2024 References Sometimes when situations get so bad at home you can't bear it, you get the urge to run away. And then you do, but once you have, the daunting question comes, how will I survive? Well, this article will guide you through thinking it through. Things you should know If you're thinking of running away from home or have already run away, Call the National Runaway Safe Line at 1-800 Runaway to talk to someone who can help you. You can also text the National Runaway Safe Line at 66008. For more support and advice, visit https colon double forward slash www.1800runaway.org forward slash dot. Steps Download article 1. 1. Think practical and short term. If you have run away from home, you will likely have limited resources available in the form of money, food, and shelter. However, it is important that you are safe and healthy. You will need to find somewhere that you can sleep safely. Look in the phone. Directory for homeless shelters or charities that support the homeless to assist you in finding a location and getting food. 1. Until you have further money, your diet is going to be basic. So if you have some money and you cannot locate free food, try the supermarket for home brand food, which is often cheapest. Keep in mind your facilities. If you don't have access to a stove or microwave, frozen meals aren't going to help you. 2. 2. Think safety first. When you run away, you are on your own in the world, and the world has the potential to be a dangerous and dark place. You need to have plans and strategies to keep yourself safe. 
What do you plan to do with your life now that you are away? It isn't realistic to just hide forever, you need to join the world somehow. Even homeless people have a specific corner where they beg for money each day and a repeated place to go to sleep. 2. 3. 3. Communicate. While you may have left your home because of a bad situation, think about how your family must be feeling. Is what you left for really that bad to inflict this much pain on them? Think about the grief they must be enduring. If the situation was that bad, think about your extended family or friends. Is there anyone in your world you can communicate with? Communicating doesn't mean going back, it just means ending the grief and sadness your departure has caused. Not knowing if you are alive or dead is the worst feeling for people who love you. Think about whether you really want to cause that. 4. 4. Think long term. Do you see yourself in the future just staying lost, or do you want to re-enter the world? 3. If you do, how are you going to get accommodation? Do you need to eventually go back to school to get a job? How are you going to do that? Do you need to wait until you are old? Enough so that the law can't force you back home. If that is the case, how are you going to get an income? How are you going to hold a job without indicating where you are? Most jobs require lodging of tax information, which in turn requires your identity. How are you going to get around this? 5. 5. Ask for help if you need it. There are a lot of free resources for children and adults that need help. Free telephone counseling is available to help you resolve the issues. Talk to charity. Workers about your life and why you left it. Perhaps they can help you find a way back if you want it. If not, they can still help with any feelings of sadness, anger or depression you may be carrying around. 4. Always be on the lookout for adults you can trust, adults who have your best interests in mind, including in your own family. Community Q&A Question I'm in middle school and I don't want to leave school. I know what high school I'm going to. Though. How do I get back to school? Community answer. Trustworthy friends would probably take you to school. If they can't, set up camp near your. School, but be very careful. If you really need to go to school, do it but it is not recommended. Because the school can contact your parents, and your parents will contact the school and ask if they have seen you. Make sure to keep camp moving because the cops will be looking. Not helpful 29 helpful 161. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Contact trusted adults or authorities for guidance. Resources exist to help assess your situation, ensure safety, and resolve issues underlying your distress. You don't have to handle this alone. Tips from our readers. Let close friends know if you can trust them. The support helps emotionally and you may be able to discreetly stay with them short term. But avoid implicating them in serious trouble. Think through involvement. Leave a note explaining your absence if running away, as your family will be distraught. Indicate you are physically safe, without revealing your location. This brings some relief. While buying you time. Avoid smartphones if trying not to be located. Even with tracking disabled, the signals. Can give away position. Burner phones may serve communication needs without. Compromising your anonymity.
Shelter basics like food, water, bedding are essentials if you stay away. Scout locations. In advance if possible, abandoned buildings, all-night businesses etc. Move between a few sites. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published. How to upgrade your life as a teenager. Download article. Parts. 1. Identifying your passions and setting goals. 2. Fostering positive relationships. 3. Setting yourself up for future career success. Plus show one more. Other sections. Expert Q&A. Related articles. References. Co-authored by Tracy Rogers, Ma. Last updated, the 29th of June, 2024 approved. You may want to make sure you get the most out of your teenage years. Working hard as a teen. Can help you develop good habits you can carry into adulthood. There are a variety of ways you can upgrade your life as a teenager. Figure out your goals and passions, pursue success. Academically and elsewhere, work on your self-esteem and self-image, and make sure you foster positive relationships. This article is based on an interview with our certified life coach and professional astrologer, Tracy Rogers. Check out the full interview here. Part 1 Identifying your passions and setting goals. Download article. 1. 1. Consider your talents. If you have goals set, you will be able to make the most out of your teenage years and form valuable memories pursuing your passions. There may be certain things that you have a natural aptitude for, or talents or skills you've spent years developing. Considering your strengths can help connect you to your passions and allow you to set personal goals. 1. Is there anything that always came easily to you? Look back to your early childhood. Maybe you never had any interest in playing sports with your classmates, but loved to sit for hours drawing pictures during recess. Maybe you Always aced math quizzes without much effort. Consider things you seem to have a knack for, or that others have complimented you on. You may, for example, love taking pictures with your smartphone and uploading them on Instagram. You may get a lot of compliments on your pictures. You may benefit from pursuing photography more seriously. You could. Look into taking a photography class in school or at an art center. 2. 2. Make memories by exploring a variety of pursuits. Do not limit yourself as a teenager. Have fun and make the most of this time by exploring a variety of pursuits. Join many different extracurricular clubs. Look into taking classes in a variety of fields. On your own time, read about subjects that intrigue you, like art, history, science, and culture. You'll end up making great memories that will make your teenage years a valuable time of your life. 2. It's okay if you try something and dislike it. Don't waste time doing something you hate. Stick to the pursuits that make you feel happy and inspired. You'll also make friends while exploring your interests. Having a solid friend group will help you form lasting memories for your teenage years. 3. 3. Discover what inspires you. Passions should make you feel excited and invigorated. Considering what inspires you in your day-to-day -day life can help you identify passions. Maybe you love reading about artists in class, and find going to art museums personally invigorating. This 
may mean you have a passion for art or art history. Spend your time pouring your energies into your personal passions. 3. Conversely, think about things that rub you the wrong way. Oftentimes, feelings of jealousy or frustration with another person are rooted in your own insecurities. If you feel miffed that your cousin's piano recitals and plays get so much attention from your family, maybe you wish you were more creative yourself. You may want to consider pursuing theater or music to see if you like it. 4. 4. Set goals for yourself. After you've spent some time considering your passions, set goals for yourself. It's important to have goals as a team, as these can help shape the trajectory of your adult life. Writing down a variety of goals for a given year, semester, or summer can help you upgrade your life. 4. Start by writing down the abstract. Just jot down some ideas on where in life you want to improve. For example, you may write something like, I want to be a better writer. Try to narrow down your goals into concrete terms. How might you go about achieving some of your abstract goals? What small goals can you set along the way? For example, I want to write 20 pages by the end of the summer. 5. 5. Be specific and realistic. Specific and realistic goals work best. Passions and interests are often abstract, so when writing goals you should work on specifying how you want to pursue these things. For example, maybe you're interested in animal welfare. A goal like, I will avoid using products tested on animals is a more specific goal than, I will do my part to end animal cruelty. 5. Set a series of specific and concrete goals that move towards a larger purpose. If you want to be a writer, you can set goals for how many books you will read each semester and decide to write for a set number of hours each night. Quiz WikiHow quiz, guess my age quiz, what age am I? Want to see a magic trick? Answer 12 super simple questions, and we'll guess your age with stunning accuracy. Are you a 12-year-old with braces and a math test tomorrow? Or a 30-year-old with a 401k? Take our quiz and we'll give you our best guess. Think you can stump us? Give it a try. One of twelve. You woke up with an amazing new talent of your choice. It's Foursquare or video gaming. Driving. Studying. Cooking. Next. Part 2. Fostering positive relationships. Download article 1. 1. Foster solid friendships. You want to share your teenage years with worthwhile people. Having a solid group of friends can help you learn and grow. Work on developing quality friendships that will raise your self-esteem. This way, you will have a group of friends you can share memories and experiences with as a teen. 6. Your friends should be supportive of you. They should not tease or belittle you. And should encourage you to make good decisions. In turn, you should also be supportive of your friends' pursuits and interests. The best way to find a group of friends is to get involved. Join clubs relevant to your interests. Be social and make an effort to reach out to others. Having likes-minded friends is important to upgrading your life as a teen. 2. 2. Ditch detrimental relationships. Not all relationships are positive. A friend should be 
supportive and caring. If someone in your life makes you feel bad about yourself, that person is probably not worth your time. You do not want your teenage years to be tainted with memories of bad friends and troublesome relationships. 7. Watch for signs of abuse in a relationship. Abuse can be physical. You should not stay with friends who hit you, kick you, or otherwise physically harm you. However, abuse can also be emotional. It can come in the form of teasing, bullying, threats, or intimidation. End relationships that are detrimental. Sever off contact with someone who is hurting you, physically or emotionally, and seek support from other friends or family members. Open up about what is going on so others can provide you comfort and advice. 3. 3. Do not give in to peer pressure. It's great to be open to trying new things as a teen, and important to making the most of your teenage years. However, you should not do anything that makes you feel uncomfortable or unsafe. True friends will not try to pressure you into doing something you don't want to do. Peer pressure comes in a variety of forms and can create unnecessary stress and tension in your life. Know how to identify and avoid peer pressure. 8. You may be pressured to drink, smoke, or use drugs. Anyone who forces you into a situation that is unhealthy or dangerous is not a friend. You should look for friends who support you and understand your comfort zone. Your friends may also pressure you to do things you're not interested in doing. It's good, to an extent, to have friends encourage you to try new things and overcome fears and insecurities. However, if you're truly uninterested in a given activity, your friends should respect your decision. Peer pressure can also come in the form of excluding others. There may be a certain person in your friends group who's being ostracized or left out. Do not participate in these kinds of tactics. Remember, you would feel bad if you were left out. You do not want to do the same to another person. 4. 4. Look for healthy romantic relationships. During your teenage years, you may find yourself dating for the first time. Romantic relationships can be a great way to live life to the fullest and make your teenage years matter. You can learn a lot about yourself through dating. If you want to pursue romance, make sure your relationship is fun, healthy, and beneficial. 9. You and your romantic partner should be able to share things. Find someone you can talk to and learn from. You should find a partner who makes you laugh and you genuinely look forward to seeing. Romantic relationships do get physical. Many people experiment with sexual activity for the first time in their teenage years. It's normal to want a physical relationship. However, you should not engage in sexual activity until you feel ready and should always use birth control and condoms to prevent pregnancy and STDs. If your partner pressures you, this is not a solid romantic relationship and you should get out. Like friendships, romantic relationships can be abusive. Your partner should be supportive and loving. Anyone who harms you physically or emotionally is not worth your time. Part 3. Setting yourself up for future career success. Download article. 1. 1. Keep your grades up. Grades are important to your success as a teen, and you'll actually find 
fulfillment if you pursue your intellectual curiosities. Work on maintaining a high GPA if you want to upgrade your life. Good grades can help you professionally and also help you learn about yourself and your passions. Practice good study habits. Make sure you make a schedule for yourself in regards to your homework and studying for exams. Try to do your homework shortly after school. Work and study in a well-lit area free of outside distractions. Keep your laptop and cell phone powered down while you work. If you're struggling with a specific subject, talk to your parents about hiring a tutor. You can also talk to your teacher and ask him or her how you can go about improving your grades in that subject. 2. 2. Join extracurriculars. Experience is important for finding a job and getting into a good college. It's also important to making your teen years memorable and fun. Finding extracurriculars will help you live life to the fullest, in addition to upgrading your life via professional success. Remember your goals and passions as you choose activities. If you're fascinated by journalism, join the student paper. If you want to work in science, join an after school science club. If you're working in areas you love, you're far more likely to have a great time during your teenage years. Teenage years can help prep you for success down the road, so try to take on leadership positions when possible. Being the editor in chief of your schools. Newspaper is far more impressive than just being a writer. 3. 3. Volunteer. Volunteering can be a great way to bolster your resume, and you'll also build lasting memories. It can also help you pursue your passions and interests, allowing you to develop your character as a teenager. Volunteer for organizations you're passionate about. Look for local non-profits that accept volunteers. Volunteer to help out with events for your school. If you go to church with your parents, volunteer there. Work for a local political party. 4. 4. Prepare for interviews. As you're pursuing jobs and internships, you'll end up getting a variety of interviews. Work on fostering good interview skills as a teen. This will increase your chances of landing a job or internship. 10. Make sure you dress the part. You want to wear something that looks professional. You should avoid jeans and a t-shirt, baggy pants, or gaudy jewelry. Strive for dress pants and a nice button-down top instead. Make sure you wear appropriate dress shoes as well. Research the company ahead of time. The more you know, the more invested. You'll look in the job. Spend some time browsing a company's website prior to the interview. Use your body language. Sit up straight and smile and nod to show the interviewer you are listening. Ask questions at the end of the interview. Choose open-ended questions that show you're interested in the company. For example, what do you like about working here? Or what's the company culture like? 5. 5. Find a part-time job. A part-time job can be a great way to get some experience in when you're a teen and many people bond with co-workers. Even a job like pizza delivery or working in a grocery store can provide fun and lasting memories. You'll end up meeting people your own age and developing a friends group from work. Having some work experience can also help you down the road as you prepare for college and later the workforce. 11. 
You can look on job boards online to find job leads. You can also ask around at local businesses. Look for help wanted signs in coffee shops and restaurants. Talk to your parents, relatives, and siblings. They may know someone in your community who is looking for employees. Try to find a job you feel like you would enjoy. You may not land a highly professional job as a teen, but look for work that you feel will be fun. If you love riding your bike, for example, consider a job as a bike delivery person. 6. 6. Write a resume. If you want to pursue success, you should write a resume. A resume is an overview of your professional experience, which you can use to apply for jobs and internships. Gaining some work experience in your teenage years can set you up for success later in life. 12. Resumes are usually formatted using headers and bullet points to list work and educational experience. Formatting should be consistent throughout and you should use a font that's legible, like Arial or Times New Roman. It can be difficult to write a resume for the first time, so ask your school's guidance counselor for advice. You may not have a lot of work experience as a teenager. That's okay. Many people hiring teens for jobs and internships understand a teen's experience is limited. List things like volunteer work you've done. If you've been part of a club or organization, list that as well. Academic success may reflect well on you if you're applying for an internship, so mention your GPA and whether you've been on the honor roll. 7. 7. Look for internships. Internships are a great way to bolster your resume. They can also provide you with lasting memories of your teenage years. A lot of internships are targeted at college students but some businesses may offer internships specifically for teenagers. 13. Internships provide hands-on experience working in an organization. As an intern, you'll start to learn the professional aspect of a certain industry. You'll be supervised by a team of professionals who will help you gain professional experience. Ask adults you know, like teachers, parents, and school counselors, about where to find internships in your area. You can also browse job sites for internships. You can possibly create your own internship with a family member or friend's company. 8. 8. Prepare for college. You should also work on preparing for college as a teen. Things like internships, jobs, volunteer work, and extracurriculars will set you up for future success career. Wise. However, you should also work on researching colleges. Look at colleges in and out of your state. Research a college's reputation, faculty, and culture. You want to find a university with a solid reputation where you feel you'll fit in. Pay attention to requirements for college. Start thinking about how to get great standardized test scores so you can attend a top university. Ask your parents if they'll take you to tour colleges. Seeing a college campus can help you decide if a given college is a good fit for you. Part 4. Maintaining a positive mood and self-image. Download article. 1. 1. Regulate your mood. You will be surprised to find how much of your mood you can control. When you're a teen, you experience a range of powerful emotions. It's normal to feel sad and 
frustrated, and important to experience negative feelings, but you can also work on ways to feel happy and positive. This will allow you to better enjoy the experiences you have in your teenage years. 14. Have a ritual you can engage in when you're feeling down. Maybe there's a TV show that makes you laugh. Maybe there's a song you like to listen to. When you're having a bad day, make a point of taking 15 minutes to yourself to cheer up. Find ways to interrupt a bad mood. If you can't stop feeling down, do something to distract yourself. Play a video game. Read a book. If you're feeling stressed in the moment, focus on your breath. Take a series of deep breaths, paying attention to the air going in and out of your nose and mouth. Focusing on your breath can keep you grounded in the present. Preventing your stress from spiraling out of control. 2. 2. Exercise. Exercising has a lot of benefits. Not only is it good for you physically, a regular exercise regimen can also help elevate your mood. Regular exercise can help put you in a better mental state, allowing you to enjoy your teenage years. 15. Pick a physical activity you genuinely enjoy. You're unlikely to stick to an exercise routine you hate. If you love riding your bike, try to go for a two-mile bike ride every day after school. 3. 3. Edit negative thoughts. Your teenage years are often a time of insecurity. You may be bombarded with a variety of negative thoughts throughout the day about yourself and your abilities. It's okay to feel bad sometimes, but you do not want negative thoughts to prevent you from pursuing certain activities and goals that allow you to thrive as a teen. Work on editing negative thoughts as they occur. 16. Identify negative thoughts. Notice when you're feeling bad about yourself throughout the day. When you slip into a negative thinking pattern, Make an active effort to resist and reframe your thoughts. For example, you may see someone doing better than you at hockey practice. You may start to think something like, she's so much better than me. I'll never be as skilled. I should just quit. Stop these thought patterns as they occur. Try to replace them with motivational thoughts. For example, she's a very skilled and inspiring player. I'm lucky to have her on my team. I'm sure she can teach me something about hockey. 4. 4. Accept your strengths and weaknesses. Everyone is good at different things. You may not have a natural aptitude for writing, but you may excel at science courses. You may not have a great brain for chemistry, but you may be a brilliant writer. Focus on what you're good at, and what you enjoy. You cannot succeed in everything, and that's okay. Pursuing what you're good at, and what you genuinely care about, will allow you to make the most of your teen years. You Want to spend this time doing the things you genuinely want to do. 17. 5. 5. Take setbacks in stride. Setbacks do not mean failure. The better attitude you have about setbacks, the more likely you'll be able to bounce back and get on the road to enjoying your teenage years. If you slip up, Accept that it's part of a larger learning process. Take rejection and setbacks as an opportunity to learn and grow. If you didn't get a great grade on your chemistry quiz, take this as a chance to identify your weak spots for the exam. If you didn't get that 
Summer internship, you can work on building your experience so you'll have better luck next. Time. 18. Expert Q&A. Question. Does life get better after teenage years? Tracy Rogers, Ma. Certified Life Coach. Expert Answer. This is a really complicated question since it really depends on what you want out of life. As a teenager, ask yourself what you want from life and what you want to accomplish. You don't have to have concrete answers to these questions right now, but it's worth thinking about. As you figure out what you want, put your effort into achieving your goals. If you do this, your life will undoubtedly be better as you get older. Not helpful 0 helpful 22. Ask a question. Submit. Tips. Submit a tip. All tip submissions are carefully reviewed before being published.